For as long as there's been commerce between groups of people, companies will battle each other over who gets the lion's share of your money. There's scarcely a consumer market in which corporate rivals haven't taken shots at each other's products and service. And video games are no exception. Once home gaming became a billion dollar industry, game and console manufacturers delighted in taking jabs at each other. Given the massive amounts of money involved, the stress that video game creators and programmers work under, and pride in all that game design, it's no wonder that some of these went on to be talked about forevermore. Regardless of their intensity and effectiveness, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 8 video games that mock their rivals. Number 8. Duke Nukem vs Every Other FPS when it came out in 1996, Duke Nukem 3D was one of the first games to openly mock the competition, via references to other prominent first-person shooters of the time. It was possible to find the body of a doomed space marine in a secret room, and in another area, Duke sets off a large series of tremors, then proudly tells us that he ain't afraid of no quake. In the 20th anniversary edition of Duke 3D, Serious Sam was added to Duke's hit list via Sam's battered corpse, complete with Duke asking, why so serious? In Duke Nukem Forever, 3D realms up their game and took on several new franchises. At various points, Duke mocks Master Chief's use of power armor, critiques needing a crowbar like Gordon Freeman, dismisses Gears of War while solving a gear-based puzzle, finds a dead space marine covering both dead space and calling back to their original title, and continues to hate on Valve while solving a pipe-related puzzle. Considering how long it took Duke Nukem Forever to get to market, and the reception that it received when it was finally released, it's safe to say that Duke's competition has always been far healthier than him. Number 7. Battlefield Bad Company 2 Takes Aim at Modern Warfare 2 The military first-person shooter field is a crowded one, but it's also a very lucrative one if done right. Worth billions of dollars in revenue, many of these titles make more money on their first day of release than many major Hollywood blockbusters. One of these titles, the beloved Battlefield Bad Company 2, inferred that its characters were tougher and more realistic than those found in rival Modern Warfare 2, which was released about four months prior. At the time, the Modern Warfare series was the king of the schoolyard, and EA Dice were looking to knock it down a few pegs. Bad Company 2 makes fun of special ops douchebags who need heartbeat monitors on their guns, directly alluding to Modern Warfare 2's heartbeat sensor gadget. It infers that characters who ride snowmobiles are sissies, as done in a prominent section of that game, and another character comments that he didn't come all this way to die from Danger Close. Danger Close is a military term related to friendly fire, and it's an achievement in Modern Warfare. Needless to say, it's not just the Call of Duty and Battlefield fandoms who end up attacking each other. Number 6. Left 4 Dead 2 Kills Off Dead Rising's Frank West Zombies were everywhere in gaming in the noughties, and two of the most reliable IPs were both Left 4 Dead and Dead Rising. Although both featured zombies, they had very different styles and vibes. Dead Rising gave you a sandbox to play with, letting you see what kind of weapon combinations you could create. Along the way, Frank West mowed through thousands of zombies, chugging orange juice and taking photos of himself in action. The Left 4 Dead series, on the other hand, was a sometimes terrifying team-based exercise in survival against fast-moving undead who came at you in different forms. Rarely did this series let you catch your breath, and that was entirely the appeal. Valve saw an opportunity to highlight the differences between their take on zombies and what Dead Rising was doing. At one point in Left 4 Dead 2, you'll come across a particular safe house, where inside you'll find a note on a whiteboard from Frank West. In this note, Frank alludes to being out of film, has no hopes for a helicopter rescue, and admits that he's just not equipped to deal with this franchise's zombies. We never see his body, but it's pretty clear, especially viewed through a fan lens, that Left 4 Dead's pace was just too much for Mr. West. Number 5. Donkey Kong Country 2 Dismisses All Its Rivals Platformers were one of the best mainstays of 90s gaming. While many companies tried to break into the field with new characters like Bubsy, Gex, or Glover, there were only a few whose titles consistently sold well and were generally received well too. Donkey Kong, Mario, Sonic, and Earthworm Jim. Nintendo wasn't afraid of pointing out just how much better they were doing in sales and did so brilliantly in Donkey Kong Country 2. At one point in the game, you're presented with an award ceremony for collecting coins during levels. There's the traditional first, second, and third slots going to Mario, Yoshi, and Link, respectively. But next to this is a trash can labeled No Hopers. Next to this can is a very distinctive pair of red and white running shoes belonging to Sonic, and a red ray gun belonging to Earthworm Jim. It's a notably seismic shot sent during the 90s console wars that scored a direct hit. Number 4. Serious Sam Blast Duke Nukem Forever's Development Cycle the Serious Sam games are pretty simple in execution. First-person shooters featuring big guns, insane amounts of enemies, huge bosses, and a snarky attitude. 
This attitude includes jibes at a very similar franchise being Duke Nukem, specifically the laughably long development cycle of Duke Nukem Forever. The first serious Sam included a joke at Duke's expense in the form of a phone call that alluded to Sam being tired of waiting for Duke to show up. Four years later, when Forever was still in development, Serious Sam's sequel stepped up the insults. While on a mission to find a Duke's coat, our hero Sam finds a very distinctive skeleton hanging from a tree instead. This skeleton has blonde hair, sunglasses, and black combat boots. It's also sporting what appears to be a live rocket, tucked in a spot that even Duke couldn't attempt to play off as cool. Just to drive this point home, Sam has a line about how Duke has been hanging there forever. Not remotely subtle, but even more ridiculous is that Duke's game wouldn't release for another six years. Number three, everything Sega did to market the Genesis. The 90s console wars were one hell of a time. Just no holds barred cheeseball marketing strategies that were 90s as hell in radical attitude, with Sega employing the guy who helped revive Hot Wheels and create Masters of the Universe to market the Genesis directly to teenagers. This guy was Tom Kalinske, and he held nothing back. Check out any TV ad from the time, and Sega's strategy was to straight up lay out that Mario was slow and for children. Sonic's speed was highlighted non-stop, with a teenager shown preferring Sega's machine to Nintendo's Super Nintendo. Kalinske also pioneered the Sega scream that was everywhere at the time, and brought about the Sega does what Nintendo don't tagline. They even invented a term, blast processing, that was used to further demonstrate just how much better the Genesis and its games could be. Obviously, Nintendo conquered a whole other dimension by venturing into 3D, leaving Sega to play catch up and eventually bow out the console race. When they were neck and neck though, it was one hell of a thing to see. Number two, GTA 3 highlights the limitations of Driver. When it comes to open world games that let you aspire to building a criminal empire, Rockstar's GTA series tends to be the king. Other series have tried to match GTA's combination of mission types, vehicular mayhem, and outright fun, but Rockstar has no problem poking fun at the competition. In GTA 3, you're tasked with finding and eliminating an undercover police officer in a mission called Two-Faced Tanner. During the briefing, you're told that your target is strangely animated and that he's more or less useless outside of his car. This was Rockstar's way of putting a challenger in their place, namely Driver 2. In the first Driver game, you played as an undercover cop named John Tanner. Driver 2 though, which came shortly before GTA 3, introduced the mechanic of getting out of your vehicle to explore. Sadly, Driver 2 received a ton of criticism for its player modeling, graphics, and minimal time on foot, which Rockstar did far better and were happy to exploit. And number one, Uncharted's next gen filter. Uncharted is easily recognizable thanks to its overblown set pieces and gorgeous exotic locales. Jungles, mountains, snow, bustling towns, all are rendered with a painstaking attention to detail, coming across as realistic and endlessly interactive. Naughty Dog clearly realized how different their games were from many others on the market and had no problem pointing it out. One of the features available to buy with in-game currency is the next-gen filter. While this sounds fancy, what it actually does is turn the vibrant colors of the game into a palette of browns. Literally, just a bunch of browns. This was Naughty Dog's mockery of games like Gears of War, Red Faction Guerrilla, Killzone and Fallout 3, as they all featured backdrops and object models of dull, bland browns and greys that almost blended into one another at the time. The fact that Naughty Dog made the player spend some of their in-game cash to turn on what is in essence a dulling down of the game is the capper on this joke, and it kinda rings even truer in the modern day. And those are just a handful of various titles that directly mock their rivals. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below, and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast we'll be uploading all week. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon.